Mr. President of the United Nations General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General, Head of the State and Government Excellencies, I am honored to address you today on behalf of the Filipino people on the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. The invisible enemy that is COVID-19 has brought about an unfamiliar global landscape and unleashed a crisis without precedent. It is the biggest test the world and the United Nations face since World War II. While the United Nations has brought relief and hope to so many countries and peoples around the world, it now finds itself saddled by a virus that has taken many lives and wrecked economies and social order. We are at a crossroads. How we address COVID-19 will define our future. For the Philippines, this means putting up all of the peoples of our United Nations at the core of this response. We will need to ask hard and fundamental questions about the vision and mission that the United Nations conceptualized 75 years ago. We need to ask ourselves whether or not we have remained true and faithful to the United Nations principles and ideas. Mr. President, in the light of the realities of the present, the Philippines grieves with all of the families all over the world who lost their loved ones to this horrible virus. We extend our heartfelt condolences. We salute all frontliners who put up their lives on the line even in countries not their own. So also do we honor and recognize the healthcare professionals who selflessly answered the call and to combat the COVID-19 pandemic despite its virulence and unknown characteristics. While each nation has its own strategy in fighting the pandemic, what the world needs are coordinated international plans and efforts to pursue a common purpose. COVID-19 knows no border. It knows no nationality. It knows no race. It knows no gender. It knows no age. It knows no creed. The Philippines values the role that the United Nations plays in its fight against the pandemic. And a middle-income country whose economic advantages have been derailed by the pandemic, we welcome the launch of the UN COVID Response and Recovery Fund. Ensuring universal access to anti-COVID-19 technologies and products is pivotal in the global pandemic recovery. The world is in the race to find safe and effective vaccine. When the world finds that vaccine, access to it must not be denied nor withheld. It should be made available to all rich and poor nations alike as a matter of policy. The Philippines joins our partners in the ASEAN and the non-aligned movement and in raising our collective voice, the COVID-19 vaccine must be considered a global public good. Let us be clear on this. We can call for a global health agenda with enough resources, 
and policy space for the World Health Organization. We need a WHO that is quick to coordinate and quicker to respond. The Philippines will do its part in the pooling of global resources. Our health workers are among the best. Mr. President, just as we needed stability and confidence because of the pandemic, geopolitical tensions continue to rise. Escalating tensions benefit no one. The new flash points heighten fears and tend to tear peoples apart. When elephants fight, it is the grass that gets trampled flat. Given the size and military might of the contenders, we can only imagine and be aghast at the terrible toll on human life and property that shall be inflicted if the world war deteriorates into a real war of nuclear weapons and missiles. I therefore call on the stakeholders in the South China Sea, the Korean Peninsula, the Middle East and Africa. If we cannot be friends as yet, then in God's name, let us not hate each other too much. I heard it once said, and I say it to myself, complete agreement. Mr. President, Filipino migrant workers have been devastated by the pandemic. Many have lost not only their livelihood, but also their health and lives as well. Yet they go on in the front lines, healing, caring others in the different parts of the world. The Philippine government has embarked on an unprecedented repatriation program. More than 345,000 overseas Filipino workers needed to come home then. We have brought back half and are bringing back the rest. We thank the countries that have provided Filipino migrants with residence permit, access to testing, treatment, and related health services in this pandemic. We brought back most of our seafarers who were stranded because of COVID-19 restrictions. We pioneered with the IMO of the Green Lane for a safe changes of seafaring crews. In these times, we need stronger cooperation in promoting and protecting the rights of migrants, regardless of their migrant status. We must all adhere to the global compact of safe, orderly, and regular migration. Unless states include all the migrants in this response to this pandemic, no one among us is safe until everyone is safe, as the Secretary General has said. With the poverty rate reduced at 16.6% and a sustained economic growth of 6.4% between 2010 and 2019, the Philippines was on track to becoming an upper middle income country by the end of 2020. But the pandemic has placed our economy in recession. Despite this downward pressure on growth, the Philippines remains committed to the Sustainable Development Goal.